Good morning, or afternoon, or evening. <laughs> I promised you guys when we were having our Cyber Monday sale that if you were interested in learning more about Rick, you know, I really need makeup. I, I need a cameraman and a makeup person. I think I'd y'all know me. <laughs> uh, anyway, I promised you guys when we had our Cyber Monday sale that I would go over how I make really quick, fast um, rag quilts, the flannel quilts. There's a couple things you need to know. One is I can't tell you exactly a pattern for this because I don't know how big you want to make it. Um, or if you wanted to have, you know, just squares. Or if you want to have a little bit of a pattern to it. So I'm going to just go ahead and start one of my own and tell you how I did it. Um, and you guys can play along and you can make it exactly like mine if you want. <laughs> I don't know why you would. Um, so the great part about these, a uh, couple of things going into it. One is that I used um, all flannel that we had over in the Boom Boom Room on sale. And I'm very spoiled because we get some beautiful Moda primitive gatherings and the farmhouse quilts were in um, the sale. They're beautiful. Um, but you can go and get inexpensive flannel. The reason these rag quilts are so cool is that they're very forgiving. Um, they fray a lot and the more they fray the kind of cooler they get they also um, i quilt them with an x so with the more you wash them the softer and more cuddly and more frayed and more puckery or textured they get um, so i i love them i think they look homemade they're coming from your heart um, and they're just kind of warm and snuggly now i make mine with three layers of flannel some people only use two, and that's fine. We're in California. I get it. Um, but I use three, and you'll see that as I use the three, I, even though I'm going to do a four patch, um, I use my three so that my ragged edges, my ruffled edges, are always taking on my main square. That'll make sense in a minute. A couple of things before we get started. Be gentle on yourself. It's very forgiving. You can't see it. I'm telling you, you can't see the mistakes. It's not a traditional quilt. Secondly, if you have a pair of spring-loaded scissors, I looked for my... <laughs> I went through a lot for you guys. I went out in my sewing studio and I tried to find my spring-loaded scissors. So I have a little pair of Fiskars and they have blades about two inches on the end, little pointed blades like this. But instead of having the loop handles on them, they're just a hand, like you know, long ones and you squeeze it and there's a little spring in there, you're going to want those. Find those. If you've ever wondered why you have those scissors, this is why you have those scissors because we're going to be cutting about a quarter inch on these on these seams. Um, and those spring loaded are much easier to do, much less taxing on your hand while you're going through it. So find those spring loaded scissors. Secondly, I always take my stitch size down a little bit because as I'm making those clips, Every now and then I may catch a thread in the, in the process. It gets a little tedious, I'll admit it. Uh, so if I have smaller threads, I probably won't feel the impact of that little snip as much as I would um, if I had regular length. So I take them down to about, sometimes I've been known to go down to 1.8 millimeters instead of the usual 2.5 that I usually go at. Um, so take your, take your stitch down a little bit when you're putting your blocks together. I like seeing that stitch when I do my quilting X's. So I'm going to try to remember to tell you that um, as I go through this quickly. But in case I don't, just to give you a heads up. If you're a pinner and a clipper and a perfect piecer, um, this may or may not be the project for you. I happen to think that it's cooler to let it be a little bit rough and a little bit more rugged, but certainly feel free. Um, go for it. The measurements that I'm going to give you for my quilt are not going to be precise. They'll be close. They're what works for me, and I think it'll work for you. Um, but if you want to trim and be precise, knock yourself out. The most difficult part of this entire process is that I catch myself making mistakes. I've been sewing since I was a teenager, so almost 20 years I have been sewing right sides together. And for me to put wrong sides together and make raw seams confuses me when I'm chain piecing or stitching. Um, so I do make mistakes on it. The toughest part is you got to rethink the way you do this and, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So to get started, 
the first thing I need to do is determine what size I want my cold to be. And in this case for this demo, you guys kind of got me going. I wanted to use some of the excess stuff, you know, the extra that was left over. So I decided to make eight inch blocks. So I've cut my blocks eight and a half inches. I'm going to put a half inch seam on them, which means that most of them are going to be about a half inch seam. <laughs> some of them may be a little bit less because as we get three layers of flannel together and we're putting those seams and we're folding because it's heavy and because it's thicker, not a perfect science. Um, I also need you to understand that I cut my initial blocks pretty close. So I'm using my eight and a half inch blocks and I'm figuring that I'm going to finish them about eight inches because if they figure, if I have to figure that they're seven and three quarters or even seven and a half, I would have to get my calculator out and take my shoes off. And I'm not willing to do that. So I cut them eight and a half. And they're going to be about 8 inches when they're done. So for me, for a lap quilt, I decided I wanted it about 48 inches wide. I'm going to do 6, because 6 times 8 would be 48. I'm going to do 6 blocks across for the width of my quilt. And I'm going to do 8 blocks down. 8 times 8 being 64. It's going to come out about 62 by 46. Eh, close enough. But 6 times 8 means I'm going to need 48 blocks. A lot of blocks, right? So 48, 48, eight and a half inch blocks. Let me take you over here. No, let me take you over here. Isn't this fun? I told you I need a cameraman. So some of you may recognize this. If you want to look at it the right way, I'll, I'll turn them. This was the deer flannel that we had over in the boom boom room. And I kind of loved it. It reminds me of my brother um, because he, and I, I, I'm sure you've heard, heard me tell there was property up north and we used to go look for deer and all that kind of fun stuff. So I am going to make this flannel my focus flannel. My big 8 inch block is going to be in this particular pattern. So I know I need at least 24 of them. Then I know I need at least 8 or to 48 pieces of my plain or my middle flannel. Now this is where I will use inexpensive flannel that you can get on sale, like rock bottom prices. And the less expensive it is, the more it frays. So knock yourselves out. Lots of people will just use cotton in here because cotton will fray. Lots of people will use muslin. It won't be nearly as heavy. I'm going to use flannel just because I like it warm and fluffy and fuzzy and all that stuff. So plain piece. Then you're also going to need a piece of flannel for how you want your back to look. So in my case, because I'm doing three layers, I'm going to have my black flannel, back flannel piece be the same as my top flannel piece. Oddly enough, that's going to be a bit of a challenge because my flannel, in this case with the deer on, is directional. So I can't, I could, but if I want all of my deer to keep facing the same direction, top and bottom, I'm going to have to make sure that I have them going the same way, top and bottom. So if I need 24 of these, I'm going to cut 24 eight and a half inch scores for the top. I'm going to cut 48 for the back, right? So now I have cut 72 eight and a half inch squares of my main focus fabric because the back of my rag quilt is going to be all the same. And then I've cut 48 of my center block squares. Okay. So I am going to make my alternating square for this in a four up. And by a four up, I mean, I'm going to use four different fabrics and sew them together and have them come out pretty close to my eight and a half inch square, I hope. So I have picked and you can see, I'm, this is kind of my example square and it's going to come back later for you. But I have picked four coordinating fabrics um, from the Boom Boom Room. I had this little flannel that almost looks like sky. It's light blue and white. And then I had this really nice milk chocolate plaid farm of the part of the farmhouse flannels collection. Also part of that farmhouse collection was this tweed, this gray kind of tweed. And then I had this blue, um, I don't know, it's almost like branches, but it's a blue texture, blue texture, a blue texture uh, that went along nicely with the deer, the wildlife scene. So those are my four that I'm going to turn my four block into. 
I have cut these and I've cut 24 of each of these because I need to make 24 completed blocks. So I've cut 24 of each of these and I cut them four and three quarters. All right. So 24 of each of those because then when we get it together and you'll see now, this is a better example for you. I have not washed this. It will get even fuzzier when I wash it, but just playing with it after I snip it with my finger, that's the kind of look we will get. And I'm going to alternate my blocks into my four ups and my main blocks. All right. So once I have everything cut, I'm a stacker. <laughs> I'm a stacker. So I went through and I put together 24 of my main blocks with a top, a middle, and a back piece. And I've got those 24 ready to go. And then I went through just to be a little bit ahead of the game. I went through and I made 24 stacks of my center felt, felt my center flannel and my back flannel to be ready to put my four patch on top. So my next step would be to make my four patches, right? Right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make piles of my four patches and I'm going to keep them in the order that I want to stitch them. Okay. So I'm going to get these ready to just go in and do what we call chain piecing. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to want my blue texture here and my little herring tweed here, my milk chocolate here, and then my little happy, whatever you want to call that there, <laughs> clouds, my nature scape. How's that? And I'm going to go through then and I'm going to stitch I'm going to speed piece all of my blues to my brown. But here's the kicker. I have to put wrong sides together. I'm going to put the wrong side of my blue on top of the wrong side of my milk chocolate brown. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sew a half inch. Right? I am. I'm going to, in my case, I can turn on, I'm extra, extra lucky I am, I know, I'm spoiled, but I can turn on my guide, right, I got that cool, cool guide light, and I can come over and I can tell it that I want it to be a half inch mark, and it will mark my guide line on my fabric, and it'll show me right where that half inch is going to be. If you don't have the luxury of the guideline marker, um, I can help you with that. Just give me a call, 707-679-3007. And you too can own a Slars. <laughs> or, I mean, there's other beautiful machines with the guideline markers, I'm teasing. But find your half inch mark on your guide, right? Your throat plate guide should have a half inch mark. It's right before the 5 8 5 8 used to be the standard for seams when your garment's sewing. The notch before that is your half inch or four ace. So just find that. So you can mark it. Some people will put a piece of, you know, painter's tape there. Some of you have the cool magnets that go down there. Some people just put a post-it note there. Whatever you want to do, um, mark that half inch seam. Then I'm going to take the length of my stitch, and I mentioned this before, when I'm putting any of my seams that I know I'm going to be snipping, I move my stitch length down to 1.8. That's just me. Okay, and I'm going to stitch this wrong sides together. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab my next blue and brown off my pile. And I'm going to stitch them wrong sides together. And for me, because I have them in piles in front of me, this goes really quick. You can even match them together and have your sets ready to go. I'm not clipping and I'm not trimming in between my sets. I'm simply stitching them to try to get all 24 of my blue thatched one, um, you know, stitched half inch. I'm going to have 24 sets of these, right? You know I'm right. Okay, so once I get all 24 of those done, come on. Once I have all 24 of those done, my button. 
I am going to just separate them, right? I'm going to clip off my excess thread here, separate them. Okay. And then I'm going to open them up like so, and I'm going to press to the dark. So I'm going to press my raw edge on top over to the dark. So I'm going to end up with a whole pile of this two set with my edges pressed to the dark. Okay. I don't use starch on flannel for these because it's going to be close, but I'm going to end up snipping it. So I don't necessarily want to use starch. So I'm going to take those over to the ironing pad and I am going to put all of those to the dark. Then when I have that pile pressed and ready to go, I'm going to come over and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to chain piece with my light blue and my gray tick for lack of a better name. <laughs> so I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab all of those light bloom and tick fabrics and I'm going to sew together, wrong sides together, 24 sets of those and I'm just going to chain piece them right into my machine, same half inch seam, same kind of tight seam allowance until I have all 24 sets of those done. Go with me. All right, so same exercise. Second stack, same as the first. Oopsies. I'm going to open these up and I'm also going to press these to the dark. Okay, so I'm going to press this open seam to the dark on this stack as well. Now, when I have all 24 of those done and pressed, I'm going to end up with stack that looks hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> a lot like this. Where my, see, the magic of camera. I did it all. I didn't do it all, but I got ahead. So I'm going to end up with seams pressed like this. Not this one. Yes, it is. Where you can see I've pressed to the dark. See how my lights are going over onto my dark? Now, the reason I'm doing that is that I need to open these seams up and put these two together. And remember, I said that I want, I want it to look like this. I want my blue to match my heather and my chalk to match my scar. So if I have pressed these seams the correctly, when I go to put these two raw edges together, because I've pressed them, that seam is going to nest. So in other words, my top one that I've pressed will be folded this way and the other one will be going this way. And then that center seam should just nest together when I come over to my machine and sew all of these. So I'm right back at my machine. I'm still using the half inch square. I have matched up my edges pretty darn close. They're not perfect, but they're close. And wrong sides together. I'm going to come and now do another half inch seam, putting all of these sets together. Uh oh. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, I got a little off. It's okay, I'm back. I'm back. No, I'm back. So I'm going to speed piece and I'm going to put all of these sets together, all right? Do, do, do. Come on. My little fingers aren't working. This is where I will tell you guys, I get so messed up because I keep wanting to put my right sides together. I don't know why. So I'm going to put them in stacks in front of me, um, exactly how I want to sew them so that as I grab them, they are together and in the order I want to keep them in. Okay, so I'm going to sew all 24 of those halves together 
And then I'm going to come and I'm going to take them apart and I'm going to get rid of the extra strings, okay, threads. And you'll see that these are going to result in a four patch and the two seams are down and this main one is up. It's not that big a deal, honest. Okay? So you'll end up with 24 of your four patch squares. Honest. Honest you will. <laughs> All right. So let's take those four patches over here. We'll take our whole stack of four patches, and we'll hope that they're all sewn the same way, even though, in my case, they're not. I got a little off. I didn't listen to myself, so I got a couple of them that came out wrong. But it's okay. I caught them. But the good part is, is that when I come back and I stack them all together like this and make sure that I have them stitched correctly, I can double check and make sure, because I want them all to be the same. So by doing all of these and stacking them and making sure I got all 24, opening them up, I know that I have them stitched consistently all 24 tops. All right, so I'll bet you can all figure out what I'm going to do now. I'll bet you can. I'm going to take these 24s that I've got done correctly and I'm going to match them with that bottom piece that I prepped, remember? I put together 24 of my bottoms and back pieces, okay? So I'm just going to make another three stack, like so, with my backing, my inside border, and now my top. But again, I'm going to make sure that all of my I, I'm not sure how to tell you what to do. <laughs> I know that when I'm putting this together, I want this tweed to be in my upper left. And I want to make sure then that if I'm doing it that way, that if that tweed's my upper left, then this is always going to be my upper right, and this is always going to be my lower left, and this is always going to be my lower right. Does that make sense? if they're all going the same way. So if that's the case and that's the pattern that my deer are going to take on, that means that I've got to make sure that my back deer are all facing the same way because I want them to stand up on the back of the quilt. So again, if I want this to be my upper left, then I want my deer to be standing up correctly on the back. So I'm going to stack and double check all of those. Here's the deal. Do I think it'd be bad if all of my deer were cattywampus on the back, like somewhere upside down and somewhere right side up? I don't think that's bad at all. I really don't. I think that deer are frolicking in nature. <laughs> they can be going other directions. I'm cool with that. But y'all know I get a little weird about stuff. So I'm going to double check those and make sure that I have those placed correctly. But I'm gonna put one together incorrectly to show you that when you do it wrong, it really stinks. Okay, so does this make sense? I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna match my sets, All right, like so, and I'm gonna double check and make sure that my deer are standing up correctly on the back. All right, so once I've created 24 blocks of that. And now they're sticky, right? The flint, that felt just kind of sticks to each other. But once I know I have those all stacked correctly and all my deer are standing up correctly, cattywampus, I'm going to be ready to start sewing and stitching this stuff together. But I'm going to quilt it first. And by quilting it, for me, that just means I'm going to put an X. So corner to corner, um, on my eight and a half inch blocks and then I'm going to go corner to corner in each of my little four and three quarter inch blocks. So I'll show you how I do it quick. For those of you that want to draw lines with Frixon pens, let me go grab my ruler. There you go. Grab my ruler. You can draw lines. Whatever. Knock yourselves out. Whatever makes you feel good. I want you to do it. So I would go back and I would grab my stack of my 24 little happy deer animals here 
and I can take my Frickson pen if I know where it is. It should be right here. No, that's my acorn pen. <laughs> Found it. So I'm going to take, boy, so much space here. I'm going to take my Frickson pen and my little straight edge here ruler and I'm just going to draw a line corner to corner on my top and I'll do it on all 24. I will. I'll draw that line on all 24 and then I'm going to take that over to my machine and I'm simply going to stitch corner to corner, come back, stitch the other corner to corner. I'm going to change my stitch length because I like to see this quilting. And like I said, I use white thread just because I like to see the contrast. Um, so right down the line, corner to corner. back and I'm gonna do the other side corner to corner I do have my single needle switch stitch plate on here just because I don't necessarily want it to eat my flannel and I will tell you that even though I don't have it today if you have a walking foot you may want to use your walking foot when you are stitching these together um, a walking foot's only going to feed that fabric through much more evenly. So after I have quilted or gone corner to corner on all of my 8 inch spots, all I do is I come over here and I compress and get that Frickson pen line out of there. So now it's quilted corner to corner. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Okay. So when I get those done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do, oopsies, I'm going to do all of my four ups. So I have my four ups all in a pile. Even though that's a little bit when I was moving it around the place. And I will come, remember I said I want my cool little gray tick up in every upper right left hand corner, upper left corner. So you can do the same thing on here if you want to be picky you can take and you can draw a line corner to corner all the way across this. Now, I will tell you that I don't do it. <laughs> it's as picky as you want to get. I will come in here and I will eyeball it and I will make my X's from my stitch points. Okay? So I'm not going to make a big X. I'm going to do each X in each one of these squares with my stitch points. You with me? Because the way those fabrics lay, this one's laying down. I'm going to come in here a quarter inch and I'm going to give it a clip. I'm not going to clip my stitches where my seam is, but I'm going to give it a little clip a quarter inch away from the seam on that one where it's laying down and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give a little clip a quarter inch from that one and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do my X's corner to corner from where my stitch line is on my four up. Let me show you what I mean. It's such a small area. I can see it. I can see point to point um, and I can see if my little skills, <laughs> I can hopefully see where my needle's going and keep it on track. Especially if I got a guideline, I can go right to that corner. Stop, cut my thread, go back and get the next corner. And then I end up with a little X in that square. Okay? That's all I'm going to do. Again, when you wash this thing a hundred times, you're just not going to see it. You're not going to see it. So I, because I have the luxury of coming to work every day and playing on the Solaris, We'll just clip my thread, lift it up, go over that center seam, just so I can leave that little flap of fabric there, and I'll come over, and I will actually, I'll bet you guys don't want to watch me sew, <laughs> I will come over and do the other side. 
So I started one diagonal corner, I did this line, I flipped it up, I came back, and I did this line. And I'm gonna go turn it, and I'm gonna start up here in this corner, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stitch across to my point, I'm going to cut my thread, I'm going to lift my pressure foot, I'm going to take it up over that little bulk of fabric there, put my pressure foot back down, and I'm going to sew right off to the corner of this side. Okay, now I've got an X going through each of my squares, I'm just going to come back I don't have an X. I have one line. I'm going to come back and make an X in each of those squares. So I'm going to go up here to this corner. And boy, am I not worried if it's puckered a little bit. If you're using your walking foot, you won't have to worry about that at all. It's probably going to get you there in one fell swoop. But I am here to tell you, in my lifetime, since I was a teenager, that 20 years ago, I've made a whole bunch of these, and when you wash them, it all comes out in the wash, as they say, because that puckering and that texturing all starts to show up. So you can't tell if you are off a little bit or you got a little pucker. I want those puckers there. All right, so all I'm doing is coming back and making those X's in my blocks. That's it. That's all I'm doing. do that with all 24 of these kits. All right. And then you probably know what's coming. I'm going to alternate my four blocks with my solid blocks. I'm going to make sure that my deer are right side up on the back before I do it. Here's the hard part. <laughs> I need those raw seams. So I'm going to make sure my raw seams are up and I'm going to get them darn close and I'm going to sew my half inch together and I'm going to keep doing it until in my case because I want six blocks I'm going to have three of my four ups and three of my main eight and a halves and have my first row done okay so let me show you after you do um, your blocks and you have them sewn together it's time to go in and ruffle up the edges. So remember, I, I mentioned, this is where you want your spring-loaded scissors if you have them. Um, it comes in pretty, pretty handy. It's a lot less taxing on your hand. So I have tendency to do this when I have my sets, right? So here's my sets. I have a set of two. I will come in and make my little notches now because it's a little bit easier to manage. Um, I don't want to be doing it when I have my whole quilt together, but it's personal preference. You can do it whichever way you want. But all you're going to do is come in here and cut, and I fold it in half. So I want to cut about a quarter inch apart. It doesn't need to be exact. It really doesn't. I promise. You don't want to clip your threads in your seam. That's all. That's what you're working on. Now, I have seen people that mark this to make sure they're getting exactly a quarter inch. If that's your personality, knock yourself out. I think we all know it's not mine. <laughs> so I can come in here and give it my best shot. And when you start doing this on all 24, and then on your four patches, and then all 48, and then, and then... Um, you will get to where you're just doing them as fast as you can. And again, those spring loaded because every time I make one of these clips with my kais, which I love because they're sharp on the ends, 
so they're going right through to where I place them. But I have to open them back up with my thumb and my grip. So your hand, and then squeeze them, right? So your hand gets very tired. Spring-loaded scissors. So now when I have those all clipped like that, you can see it's a little bit frayed. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do my four square. Now, here's the difference. Because I did it the way I did it to be fast, my middle flannel isn't in the seams of my four squares, is it? So I'm really only ruffling up two sets of flannel when I'm doing these seams inside my four squares. And I got to tell you, I kind of like it better. And here's why. Think about it. My accent piece now, so the one with the thick seams all around it, is going to be all of my 8-inch blocks. So my heavier, more fluffy, more textured, the one that has the extra piece of flannel in it, will be around my 8-inch blocks. So I think it frames it and makes it look a little bit cooler. Um, it's not Joe noticeable to the naked eye, but it's Joe noticeable to me. Um, and I like it. I just think it gives it a cooler effect. So I don't stress out that it's a little bit thinner. And seriously, when you wash it, they kind of turn into rows. You don't even see these clip marks. You just see rows of fuzz. And that's what makes them look raggy. So obviously I'm doing this a little quick because I'm trying to occupy time on camera here. So when I'm done, if you want to see what it's going to be, you give it this thing. And you sit here and you wear out your fingernails trying to get it to fray. And then you regret wearing a navy blue sweater because all of these little threads are going to come out and follow you the rest of the day. <laughs> As you take on your day, you're going to have little frayed threads everywhere. And that's cool because then you can tell everybody what you're doing. So there you go. All right. So you can see it starting there. And obviously the more you fuss with it, the more you will get off and get it to start to look the way it's going to look. But your best results come when you wash it. Um, clean your lip traps. <laughs> but you will start to get that fray and those cut lines become less and less noticeable as that frays down. And now you see why I make my inside seam smaller. Um, I want that to fray down as far as I can because I don't want you to see those cut lines. I just want you to see the fuzz. Get some fuzz going on this side, some fuzz going on that side. Okay. So more expensive flannel doesn't fray as fast as the least expensive flannel, as you can see, but it all frays. All right. I'll bet you guys know the drill. If your demo um, person would have put her squares on correctly, <laughs> but she didn't, um, she sewed this side wrong, but she's going to admit it to you. You're then going to just do the same thing on this side, right? You're going to put these wrong sides together. You're going to make sure that your deer are standing up and you're going to sew these two together and you're going to clip them and you're going to rough them up. And you're going to do that till you have three sets or six blocks across will be your top row. Do eight rows down. Voila, you will have a full rag quilt. I'm going to finish this up over the weekend and I will show it to you um, on our Facebook page, our In Stitches Facebook page, so you can see it all done. We may even raffle it off. We'll see. I don't, I can't think of anybody in my life that would love a rag quilt, so maybe we will have a getaway, giveaway on it so that if you guys don't get yours done, you can have this one. But I'm going to fix this block to make it right so that my pattern's the same. Or I'm not because it can be messed up. It doesn't matter. Your quilt. Oh, let me get back in shot. <laughs> Your quilt so you can finish it any way you want. That's it. That's all there is to the rag quilt. Um, have fun. And do not stress out over it. Sometimes I think it looks better with mistakes on it. It's meant to be warm and to cover people with love, like quilts are supposed to do. I think especially with the flannel rag quilts, that's true. So be gentle on yourselves. Just get it done. 
All right, now that you know, go so. That's all I got. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you have questions, do not hesitate to leave me messages. I will respond as quickly as I can or follow us over on that Facebook page of ours in Stitches, Dixon, California. I see those posts immediately when you send them over or someone does. Someone will help you. All right. Hope this will be a fun project for you. Thanks, guys.